to you, Louis, is when you did that hump bust, did you have any idea that this would be, or anything like this, be resembling the film that we saw tonight? No, no, I mean, I think it's a, it's a, it's a still a work in progress. I mean, we, we busted the hump during the Academy Awards. Um, with the, we, we went, Charles found the restaurant back in October before the Academy Awards, and then we did a bust, we, we brought it to the, the, the attention of the federal officials, and they said, oh, you need a chain of custody. I said, what's that? They said, well, you need to have one of us watching it. And we were broke at that point, and we didn't have the money to come back. It took cost thousands of dollars to fly everybody back in. And uh, then we got nominated for the Academy Awards, so we had the team back in town. So that's, we did that like the, the week before the Academy Awards were in town. For it. Louis didn't even believe me that they were serving this. And you're, you're in a two mile radius of 10 environmental organizations in Santa Monica. But, but as soon as we got the results back from Dr. Scott Baker, yeah, he was right there. Anyway, yeah, so, but, you know, my, my, friends, my friends of paleontology say that uh, when you look back at, you know, the, the history of humanity since the Industrial Revolution, we're going to look back at World War II and it will be a footnote in comparison to what we're doing right now with the loss of biodiversity. I think it's the most important subject in the world. The, the trick is how do you make it, you know, so that you're going to go see a film like that on, like this on a Friday night. And that's why it's really important for, you know, your, you to give a response to, to know what, what works and what doesn't work. So. That URL is tinyurl.com slash six the movie. Tinyurl.com slash six the movie. And we have little sheets of paper for you as you exit, just a little reminder as well. So grab one of those. Um, do we have a question in the audience? That, uh, does anyone? Oh, here we go. If you could just stand up so we can see you on stage, that would be great. Oh, I just want to make a comment. I want to thank you for the way you end of the movie and all the overwhelming questions of how in the world anything's going to get better that probably were on lots of people's minds got answered by the end about lighting a candle instead of cursing the dark instead of cursing the darkness and turning that village from you know a, a hunting village to a tourism village and seeing all those children's faces of the future. Thank you for answering all those overwhelming questions that came up during the We have one all the way over here for us on the stage on our right in the back. If you could wave your hand just a little so they can see you, that'd be great. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jean Han, and I'm a scuba diver, and I would personally like to go to that village to endorse this tourism. How do I go? And my second question is, so can this film include some everyday things for the common man, the Manhattanite New Yorker, instead of use less water, eat less beef? Thank you. Should I start with the village? You call me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're really at the infancy of developing the tourism there. And the first stage of that is getting in the, so in the, inside the heads of these people and understanding their needs. It, and it's not just about fishing. You know, they need water. They need education. They need a lot of things. A lot of people think environmental issues are solved with environmental solutions. Environmental issues are solved with people solutions. And so we had to go to that village. We had to spend time with the elders and the children, with the hunters, listen to what they needed, and to tell them that we're here to help and not tell them what to do. And we've now earned their trust, and through media, what you just saw there, we just arrived last night from that village. So that was literally uploaded two days ago. That just happened. In their world, it happened now. And so we've reached them, we've touched their hearts, and now the next step is about actually showing them that we mean what we say, and bringing people to celebrate a new future for that community. And so the way we do that is fly across the world, we get people on that side of the world to come in, and we start the just, just the infancy of tourism for that community so they see hope and they see something that these children watching that screen, maybe one day some of those kids will be filmmakers. Maybe one day they'll be part of it. Yeah, I mean, what, when people say, what can I do? I think, well, the first question I want to ask is, what, who are you and what are you good at? Because, you know, it's, it's one thing for us to, you know, to talk about what we think, but, you know, you're going to come up with your own ideas. Um, you know, what, what we do at work, you know, I, I generate 140% of our energy off of my rooftop. The electric company pays me to, to generate electricity. In the darkest month of the year, December, I get checks from the electric company. That's one thing I'm doing. I drive an electric car, the, my license plate says VUS, it stands 
for vehicle using sun. It's the opposite of an SUV. I hope that's just like a, <laughs> I hope that's just a, you know, like, this is just one silly idea I had and it's working. But I'm hoping that there's a lot smarter people out there in the audience that have better ideas than I do. But certainly, you know, the first step is to get up, onto a plant-based diet. There's no way to be an environmental health <laughs> misconceptions in the West that somehow people in China are different. 
look what we did as a Western world to the rest of the planet when we had our turd. We did an incredible amount of damage. We did the hunts in Africa. We wiped out rainforests. We took our turn. The problem is there was less than a billion people then. Now there's seven billion people and there's over a billion in China. So we can't wait for another nation to sort of go through that progression. And what I've learned working in, in Asia for now almost 15 years is it's just about timing. It's not about interest or willingness. The new generation, the younger generation in China is incredibly passionate about change. They just haven't been exposed to it. The PSA that you saw with Wild Aid reached over a billion people in Asia. And when they saw it, they said, you know what, I get it. It's time to make a change. The prices of shark fin has dropped by 60 to 70% in the last two years as a result of those efforts in mainland China. Stores, the places you even saw in this film, those are closing doors right now. Some of the most, the largest distributors in Guangzhou, which is the hub for the shark fin trade, they're shutting down. And the reason is people are waking up. They've just been given the education. So most of the work I do is in that side of the world. A lot of my films are aired on Chinese television. They're aired in air, airlines across China. This film, I guarantee in one form or another, is going to make it there. And the content is already there. So I think it's just about pushing that message and giving people the chance and believing that we're all part of it. It's not China versus the West. It's all of us. And let's just sort of break down those barriers and share and encourage and invite them into this next generation. And, uh, you know, one thing we want to do this summer is uh, have Travis do the world's largest projections using, you know, the Empire State Building as a centerpiece for these major projections and then use the, the entire skyline to give endangered species a voice. And the idea there was that everybody, that's why we're, this is really a work in progress. We want to really put that into the ending because that's the kind of event that would be, it's not just a good movie that you see at a film festival, it's like a, a movie that, that, that little YouTube clip would just become viral. I know it would. And I think billions of people would see that around the world. And that's, that's our hope and dream is that we can raise the money to do these ma massive projections and then that becomes part of the end of the movie. So if we just, you know, amplify this, this message that you just saw by orders of magnitude because uh, it becomes like an advertising campaign for the Get the Tesla to China, maybe. <laughs> Being those projections all over. Uh, we have, I think, time for one more question. Um, right here, down in front. Hi, my name is Tanika Gudo. Um, when people were saying they didn't know how to apply this to what's happening now, I think it would be good if maybe you guys show uh, the big box stores that you mentioned that might be selling the fish oils or the shark oils. Or maybe we can go into some of the underground markets that are happening right here in New York, where I bought my red ear slider turtle. We're, we're actually working with the federal officials right now to do that. We're, we're sort of jumping the gun by showing this, but uh, yeah, we've been working on it for about two years now. And uh, it's just, it's, yeah, we're working on it. Well, how about another huge round of applause? Thank you. 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 Th